Hello, it is Alternative August, where every week this month I am looking at an alternative of a popular piece of hardware or a popular piece of software, and this week we are looking at alternatives to Wacom Cintiqs. So this video is a distillation of several videos that I've done over the last couple months. I've had the opportunity to review a lot of different kinds of drawing tablets, and so today I am talking about my top five. But before I jump into that, I just want to clarify something up front. What is a Wacom Cintiq? It is a brand of drawing tablet, and when I say drawing tablet, the word tablet can get a little confusing because we now think of tablets as like an iPad or a Surface tablet. In this case, probably a better term would be drawing monitor. It is basically a screen, a monitor screen that you can draw on. That's what the Cintiqs are. So it doesn't have its own software. It can't run Windows. You can't just unplug it and take it with you like some of the other tablets, things we call tablets out there. So why would you want something like this as opposed to something that already runs Windows or an iPad that has its own operating system and apps? The first is price. You can get a 19 inch screen for about 400 to $500. That is a lot cheaper than you can get a computer of that size for. Also worth mentioning is the size. Obviously an iPad is limited to like 12 inches, 12.9 to be exact. A Surface is limited to a little bit smaller than that. You can go a lot bigger. In fact, one of the ones I'm looking at today is a 22 inch screen. And lastly is upgradability or not having to upgrade. If you get a Surface and three or four years down the road you decide to replace it, you have to replace the entire thing. Whereas a drawing tablet, many of these things can last years and years and years without replacing. For example, my original Wacom Cintiq from 2008 lasted me three whole laptops before I ended up replacing it. And the, even then, it still works great. It's just that I have better things to use now. All right, onto my list. It's not comprehensive. I haven't used every single drawing tablet in the world, but I have used many of them and I have found some very good ones. And those are the ones we're talking about today. I'm going to start with number five, the Yi Yi Nova MVP 20U Plus FE. It is only $400 and it's okay. It's 19 inches and $400 is a very low price for that size of a monitor. The main knock that I have against the Yi Nova is that there is a fair amount of wobble in the pen. In fact, at times I found that there was a lot of wobble in the pen. But I found that the viewing angles were very good and it hangs off your desk a little bit, which I thought was really cool. I thought this was one of the most comfortable tablets I've ever used because of the way the stand was set up. It's really unique, kind of cool, and I would like to see them do more of that in the future and even even if other manufacturers wanted to copy it down the road, I would be totally okay with that. I think if they can clean up the pen and the jitter in the pen a little bit, the next version of this tablet will be really, really good. Number four goes to the Huion GT191. I really like the Huion, and getting a big 19 inch screen for only $450 is a really good deal. The closest Wacom comes in the Cintiq category to this is the Cintiq 22, which is bigger, but it also costs $1,700 to give you a sense of price difference. I think the Huion feels really good to draw on, and out of all of the tablets on this list, it has the best color accuracy out of the box. So if you're very particular about your colors and having that kind of accuracy, definitely take a look at the Huion. It has a smooth glass screen that comes with a matte film that you can easily just kind of fold over. I wasn't really a fan of the matte cover because I don't like the way that it just kind of floats over the screen, and it also scratches really easily, so I just pulled it off. I'm using the smooth glass screen, and it's fine. One of the ways that they've managed to keep the price down is by not having having hotkeys along the side of the device. You're probably gonna wanna pick up some kind of remote or programmable number pad. You know, some people can get away without using hotkeys. I think because the device is so big, I like to have them having my, you know, keyboard off to the side is just a little too awkward for me. Might work for you if you have the desk space. I'm really dependent on toggling between tools, changing brush sizes, doing undos, redos, that sort of thing with hotkeys. I just really like them. The one thing that I didn't like about this tablet that I mentioned in my review is that the cords kind of face down. They come downward out of the back of the monitor. This was kind of confusing when I explained it in my video. A lot of people said, why don't you just tuck them in the hole in the stand? It doesn't seem like a problem to me. So I'm going to kind of show a little bit what I'm talking about because that doesn't really help. So at higher angles, this is no problem. But as you kind of lower the angle of the monitor down, the cords just don't have enough room to bend. So what ends up happening is the bottom of the monitor is actually resting on the cords and that makes it a little bit tippy. And long term, I'm not sure what what that does to the cords, if it's going to wear them out or cause them to break or anything, I would imagine possibly. So be aware of that if you like to draw at really low angles. Number three is the XP Pen Artist 22E. I like this one because it's 
is so dang big. Drawing on a 22 inch monitor is really nice. It has good colors, good drawing angles. The one knock I have against it is that I can detect a little bit of pen wobble on some of my strokes. It's not true pronounced, but it's definitely there. I'm using this one as my monitor currently, and it's probably my primary drawing tablet on the Mac right now. I like that I can just pull it down and then draw on it, pull it back up, stick it on my monitor riser, and I don't have to like keep unplugging and replugging in a separate drawing tablet when I need to draw. It's kind of heavy, but uh, I can handle it. It comes with the screen protector. It's similar to the one that comes with the Huion, uh, and like the one that came with a Huion, I, I really wasn't a fan of it. I'd rather just draw on the smooth glass. Number two is the Artisol D13. All around, this was one of the better tablets that I have tested. It's comparable to the old Cintiq 13 HD. This is the only non-battery powered pen that is on this list, which a lot of folks like. In fact, I think I might prefer these to the battery powered pens myself. Now there are good and bad that come with these pens. You get more parallax as you move away from the center of the screen. That means that there is some inaccuracy see and some distance between where your pen is on the screen and where you actually see your cursor on the screen. But I find that the pen lines it creates to be smoother overall than a lot of the battery powered pens out there. Of course, it's got some customizable buttons along the side and overall the build quality is really solid. Uh, some of these tablets that uh, work well, but they don't necessarily feel premium. The, the wires will wiggle a little bit, that sort of thing. This one does, or at least it comes really close. Comparing this to the new Cintiq 13, it does look a lot older. Uh, the new Cintiqs have much better screens and they're made with etched glass. So comparing this to the slightly older Cintiq 13 HD, however, this is almost a perfect clone. This tablet costs $450, which really is fairly inexpensive. That's a, almost about half the price of the old Cintiq 13 HD that's still for sale now. The only reason I put this number two on my list is because for a little bit more, you can get the number one tablet, which has a slightly larger screen. And what is that? number one tablet, you ask? The XP Pen Artist 16. Like I said, this just edges out the Artisol because it's a little bit bigger, three inches bigger to be exact. 16 inches is a really nice size. It only costs a little bit more and it's big enough to give you a lot of drawing room, but not so big that it's gonna take over your entire desk. Wacom has just started making 16 inch devices and I wouldn't be surprised to see if this becomes a more common size. The XP Pen 22 is very good, but I. I mentioned the slight pen wobble to it. On the smaller size screen, I didn't really detect the same pen wobble, even though it's using the same exact pen. They're interchangeable between products. That pen wobble might be there, but it's just harder to find on the smaller screen. And ultimately, that's what makes this my favorite Wacom alternative that I have tried. Add the shortcut buttons in the matte screen, both of which I like, and this is a real winner. So there we go. I think if you pick anything in the top four on this list, you're gonna be in really good shape and you're gonna be happy with what you get. Really what separates these isn't so much which is better but comes down to preference. Do you like to draw on a smooth screen? Do you like to draw on a glass screen? Do you like hotkeys? Do you not need hotkeys? Those sort of things were gonna factor into your decision. Of course I have laid all this out on my website so if you want to see the full reviews of any of these tablets before making a final decision go over there and check that out. I will link it down below in the description. I would like to thank all my Patreon backers for making this channel possible. Thank you guys so much. That's all I've got for today. There is one more alternative August video coming next week. I'm going to leave that as a little bit of a surprise so you can look forward to uh, what I'm going to be alternating about. I'll see you guys next week.